Hey everybody, welcome back to the Real Estate Investing Exposure Podcast. And today on the show, we have Nicole Stambra. She was born and raised in Long Island, New York, but she has been a South Florida resident since 2009. She has tested the waters literally of six different cities along Florida's East Coast, ranging from Melbourne, Palm Beach, and down to Fort Lauderdale. Having experienced living in several cities throughout Florida, Nicole has helped hundreds of clients relocate here to find their own piece of paradise. Prior to moving to Florida, Nicole served in the United States Army as an engineer officer from 2004 to 2009 with deployments to both Iraq and Afghanistan, in which she was awarded the Bronze Star Medal and I'm probably going to butcher this word, meritorious service medal for her time in combat. Nicole was honorably discharged from the army, but the leadership values and ethos she gained from her time in service are ingrained in all that she does. In 2016, Nicole founded the Stanborough Home Team and quickly became a top producing agent in the Palm Beach and Jupiter area. Nicole has grown her business as a single agent to now offering a cohesive team of elite real estate professionals, and her unwavering work ethic, persistence, innovative marketing, and overall grit at the core of her team's culture. Nicole, super excited to have you on today. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. Most certainly. And, and for our team, you know, for our audience that, you know, they're hopping onto this podcast, they're just finding out about you. I'd love for you just to, to go into a little bit more on your background. I find it, you know, we were connected from a previous client that we had worked mm -hmm. with, Brian and, and Brian's experience um, in the army. And I'd love for just for you to hop into your experience in the army and, and what that, you know, that experience was like, and then coming out of it and building, you know, just starting your, your real estate business and, and being able to grow it. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's such a pleasure meeting other veterans like Brian and kind of seeing what they've been able to build in their, um, for their fellow veteran network that they have in their um, area. So I am the veteran realtor of the Palm Beaches of Florida and I've really created a team culture that is the give back and pay it forward um, essence of you know, real estate. So we're really giving back to our fellow veterans and also our community heroes. So we've actually expanded a lot of our programs to reach out to our first responders, our educators, our healthcare providers, because in light of the, what's really been going on in the last year with COVID, we've realized that there's so many people who are, you know, contributing to our local communities that really, you know, could use a little extra help and a little extra love and support. So we wanted to reach out to them too. So um, we created a program called Operation Home Team that gives back to those um, clients that we work with towards who are looking to buy and sell real estate. Um, and that's just a piece of kind of what we do within, within the Stamber Home Team uh, business. But like you said before, my time in the service really helped build that foundation for work ethic, um, integrity, loyalty, and just really being able to um, best serve our clients here in Florida. Um, and that's really carried along with m myself personally and how I've been creating my team culture. And as you, you, know, you, you come out of the Army, and you're hopping, you know, you're hopping, you know, I guess you're hopping out of the army. Did you ever, was, you know, being a real estate agent and, and starting your own brokerage, was that a passion of yours? What led, sort of led you down that path once you, you know, you, once you were out of the army? Mm -hmm. So I, I was raised in a family. My father owned a lot of investment real estate in Long Island, New York, where I was raised. So I was always kind of in that environment of seeing, um, you know, on the investment side of real estate. And we own several properties in Long Island. And then when I went into the army, we purchased properties in Texas, wherever I was stationed. Um, but at the time it didn't really click of, oh, maybe I can create a real estate career out of this. It was just more of um, end user purposes. Um, so after I got out of the military, I got into more business development type roles and positions. So I was always in sales and marketing and um, there was a moment in my life and that was around 2016. I was pregnant with my second kid and I was working for a fortune 500 company and they were being acquired and they basically said, well, you can go work for the new company or we could give you a severance. And I said, you know what, why not just go for it and jump? So I took my real estate exam while I was on maternity leave took the severance package and just, you know, hit the ground running in real estate. And I took a lot of what I grew up with and learned over the years um, and kind of 
tying back to the military, everything is on the job training. It's all OJT is what they call it. So there's not a lot of, you know, you kind of figure it out, um, but use some of the tools that you've learned over your lifetime to be able to implement things. And so that's what I did. So in 20, the end of 2016, got my license and I just really took the leap. And it was a little scary at the moment because I came from a nice cushy corporate, you know, salary and job with all the benefits. Um, but I just knew in my heart, there was no, you know, uh, uh, failure was never an option. So I just knew um, I was going to be successful one way or another. So <laughs> That's excellent. It's funny that you mentioned Long Island. I was actually talking to a real estate investor a little bit earlier today. And he was also he was also from Long Island. He, uh, he has investment properties uh, there as well. So definitely a, a little small world. Yeah, but, it's a good place. That, yeah, most certainly. And, but as you, you know, as you know, you start off as a single agent and now it sounds like you have a team of agents. How did, how did that process work? How, you know, what's it been like growing a team and, and did your experience from the army help you, you know, interacting with them and, and building that, you know, that really good culture for them? Yeah. So a few years ago, because things were exploding so rapidly, I, you know, I tried to just grow very quickly without really having a solid plan mm. in place. And that ended up kind of, you know, biting me in the butt a little bit. So last year, especially with COVID, I was able to kind of reorganize and regroup and really make the decision to hire people who fit the culture instead of just hiring people and trying to train them and force the culture on them. If you're not a good fit, it just doesn't work. No one's happy. So I really was able to take a few steps back, um, really relook at my mission statement and my, you know, what I, what my intent is and how I want to grow my business. And then when that was clear, I was able to hire really solid people that really complement the whole overall business. So, um, and you know, in the military, it's a little different because, you know, you respect the rank, right? So I was the captain when I got out, I was an officer. Um, and so I had, you know, 100 soldiers who reported underneath me. And whether they liked me or not, or liked the mission or not, they had to respect the rank, they had to do what their duty was. But in the civilian world, it's so different. So you have to motivate and inspire and, you know, get people to drink the Kool-Aid and really, really um, become one with the culture. And it's a totally, it's, it's from leadership to management. And there is a very thin line there, but learning that um, how to, you know, how those complement each other and how to implement that has been something that's just kind of come with time. And I've had some great mentors to really help me close that, uh, bridge that gap. That's, that's excellent. And, and now I want to hop into, you know, how you've been able to, to grow your business. You know, there's, you know, there's, I always say there's real estate agents and then there's excellent agents and there's some people that just hop into it and they think that they can do it part-time on the side of their typical job or you're going into it full-time. And, and with that, with, I guess, being with that said, how were you able to, I guess, you know, find new people that were looking to sell their home and then obviously people that are looking to buy a home as well? Yeah. So, um, there's, that's kind of, everyone has a friend who's a realtor, right? And I've actually done some fun videos on this because, Realtors really are a dime a dozen. Everyone either has a license just for just to have it or for their own for a part time thing or for friends and family, whatever. So, you know, finding a realtor, you could be in a restaurant and you can overhear like six different tables talking about like realtors, right? You look at the phone and they're all scrolling and you're like, oh, there's another realtor. Um, but they're all, everyone is so, they're independent, right? So they're your independent contractor. You're totally. Um, you're your own business. So it's really been a matter of how you set yourself apart. How do you differentiate? And a good friend of mine, who's also a veteran female uh, businesswoman, she would tell me, she's like, there's three ways to kind of set you apart. You could either be the first, the best or, or different. And I'm definitely not the first realtor. I'm planning to be one of the best, but right now I'm, I'm really setting the groundwork to be a little different and unique. And that's kind of where my service, our culture, and some of the programs that we offer come into place. That, that's funny that you mentioned that. I actually, not that I do, but I, I also got my real estate license uh, oh, a, couple of, <laughs> a couple of years ago. I think it expired because I never did anything with it. But I can, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I thought it was funny when you mentioned that, uh, 
Um, yes. I can, and I can tell you from my experience trying to like, for I am trying to buy um, an investment property and the realtors that, that I've been working with, even one I, you know, she's listing a property, try to get a contact with her, never hear anything back, email her, you know, finally responds over email, ask if I could go in and, and see a showing or tell me when the showings is and just never respond. So I can tell you, you know, if you're a really good realtor, it's, you know, people like myself that are trying to buy a property, especially in this market, if you could just even respond to like an email, it's almost like it, it sets you the apart. The bar is very low. It really is like, just be responsive and be professional and you're like already ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and now, you know, I noticed when I, when I, when I was reading your bio, you had mentioned, you know, some innovative marketing tactics that your company had used. And, and I would love for you just to share some of those insights with our audience. Yes. So for me, it's been really a mix of like a layered approach. So in terms of just true marketing, you know, obviously digital marketing is really now and the way of the future, but I still know, you know, um, mailers, direct mail, postcards, um, handwritten letters, those are still things that are not going anywhere. The more personal, the better. So we've really just had a, a good mix of um, creating a grassroot marketing strategy. So everyone in my community, everyone in my neighborhood, anywhere that we've worked in or sold or helped a buyer purchase in, they know our name, um, they know our our company. And then on top of that, there's a lot of digital marketing that gets layered on top of that. So um, they, in, in areas that we operate when they're either seeing, you know, our for sale sign, they're getting postcards every door direct, they're getting handwritten letters, they're getting just listed, just sold. So they're constantly being bombarded by the Stanber home team so that if there ever is a moment in their mind where they're thinking of selling or buying or they have a friend or family member who is, we're, we're the first in their mind. So um, it's, it's a layered approach, but then being an innovative realtor is really what has set us apart because, you know, and, and I give people who've been in this business so much credit because there's realtors who've been in real estate for 20, 30 plus years. And I don't know how they did it without a computer back then, but they were successful somehow. But being innovative and being able to use the new technologies that are out there has been really game changing because everyone's moving to Florida and buying remote and virtually. And that's mm -hmm. what we've been able to capitalize on. Oh, that's, that's super, super interesting and definitely some great insight for our audience. And now I want to talk, you know, go back into the business as well. And, you know, back in 2016, when you were first starting it's a now, you know, we're looking at it five years later and as the business has been growing, have you, have you ever experienced any challenges? Have you ever experienced any setbacks while you've been going out there and trying to build your business? Oh yeah. I mean, like every day, every day there is a lesson learned and the key is to not making the same mistake more than once. Um, I mean, I can start with kind of building out the team and like I mentioned before, just hiring off of impulse and um you know just making poor decisions without really having a plan and a strategy i'm way more strategic than i am now i have an amazing coach and mentor that you know i'm able to bounce things off of and i would say that that's like my number one to anyone getting into real estate or any business in general is having a mentor that you can you know go to for help but yeah there's um I mean, mistakes happen every day. It could be deal to deal, you know, things kind of come up, but there's always just having somebody. And that's why we have a team uh, concept too. So we have people, checks and balances in place, people reviewing things before they go out. So I might not be, you know, the most, the, the expert on certain things within real estate because there's so many different transactions that happen all the time but I have great partners and agents and teammates who may be experts. And so I can strategize with them and kind of war game a good um, solution with them. So it's really just been a matter of putting the best people surrounding myself with the best, most intelligent, most experienced and capable people. And they just make it's, you know, like it takes a village. So they just make me look good because they're so good. And that's just been the team concept. Oh, that's, that's perfect. But you know, Nicole, I want to be respectful of your time today. And we just have a, or I guess not we, I have a couple of additional questions I wanted to ask you before we end, the, end our interview today. And, and as a realtor, and I know at least in, in Massachusetts, and I'm, and I'm sure it's similar down and forward, you know, the housing prices have, have risen quite 
a bit, you know, do you see them tapering off in the, in the near future? Do you think that the prices are going to continue to go up? I'm, you know, I'm just curious on, on where you think the real estate market is going to continue to go in, in 2021 and beyond. Sure. Um, I would say in my professional opinion, I do not see this slowing down anytime soon. There is, it goes back to the very basic supply and demand. There is no supply and there is a tremendous amount of demand and the demand is not slowing down at all, especially in Florida. Every day we're seeing over a thousand people relocate to the state, um, probably more by now. That was from months ago. So that is not slowing down at all. And so those people relocating down to Florida are now also competing with local people in Florida who are either move up or, you know, move down buyers or you know, investors or whatever the case is. So um, there's just simply not enough homes being built. Um, builders and contractors are not being able, are not turning out as many new construction homes as they were in say 2008. Mm -hmm. So that has really dropped off. Um, the cost of materials has skyrocketed. So again, for builders, they've had to make business decisions on, do we continue building at a loss or do we keep raising prices and what does that do to the consumer? So um, I, again, I don't see the market slowing down at all and it's simply a matter of supply demand. So, and I, it's challenging for buyers because it's certainly a seller's market right now and buyers just have to be really strategic and work with a really capable um, real estate team if they want to get a deal done because there's about 15 offers or more on every, on every new listing and you got to beat out a lot of buyers in this market. <laughs> most, most certainly. And Nicole, you know, do you happen to have a favorite real estate or business book that you'd recommend to our audience? Okay. So I love hyper fast agent because that's my mm -hmm. coach, Dan Lesniak and Carrie yeah. Scholl. So incredible. So I am a huge fan. I actually was meeting with some other friends who were thinking of getting into real estate and they asked me just a couple of days ago, actually, what are your three favorite books to kind of read <laughs> up on? That was number one. I also, it's a funny, short, quick book, but the purple cow, Mm. is um is a really good book it just talks about marketing and branding and just being different because at the end of the day you have to set yourself apart from tens or hundreds of thousands of realtors and then i also love the 12 week um 12 week work uh year 12 week work year i think that's what it is but i like how it kind of segments your um planning and strategic um business planning for the year in days and weeks those are those are excellent recommendations, and I'm looking to the left on my bookshelf. I can see the see the 12 week year. I haven't yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't read it yet. I keep hearing <laughs> references to it. It's one of those things where I'm an avid reader and I'm and I'm reading a lot of books. But also the problem with that is I'll read a book and then I'll hear a recommendation like on this podcast. So I'll read right. about a, a book and then I'll go on Amazon. I'll buy it and then I'll start reading that one. And then yeah. <laughs> it's like I never get to the books that I never get to the books that I uh, I had previously purchased. I'm yeah. there with you. This <laughs> weekend, read it. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, ex exactly. But those are excellent recommendations. Mm -hmm. And and the last question I have for you is where can our audience find you? Awesome. So I am all over the place, but uh, Stamber Home Team on YouTube, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Stamber.Home Team. And then my website is again, www.StamberHomeTeam.com. So I'm everywhere. Awesome. Thank you. I'll make sure to include that in the show notes of today's episode. And Nicole, I just want to say thank you for your time today. My pleasure. It was so good talking to you. Thanks. <laughs>